It's no secret that drugstore makeup prices have been on the rise recently, and I don't know about you, but I've been getting sticker shock a lot <laughs> with some of the newest drugstore makeup releases. But despite inflation and supply chain issues, there is still one online beauty brand that is giving us really budget-friendly makeup options that are also cruelty-free between one and two dollars, and that is AOA Studio from shopmissa.com. So I've got almost a full face of Shop Miss A makeup to try on today. We'll dive right in, but first, if you're new here, hi, my name is Miranda. Welcome to my channel where we talk all things budget beauty. If that sounds interesting to you, then become the newest member of the Slashed Squad by hitting subscribe and the bell icon. The first product I will be testing today is the new AOA Micro Brow Pen. This is $1.55 and it is part of their Paw Paw collection. So usually on shopmissa.com, if something is over a dollar, like it's $1.55, part of the proceeds are going to charity and the Paw Paw collection specifically focuses on animal charities. I bought the shade Soft Black. So this is supposed to give like a micro bladed appearance, but what makes this different than some of the other brow pens I've used in the past is the shape of the tip. It's not just a regular felt tip. There is this sort of comb-like cutout. I'm really not great with products like these. It's taken me a while to get used to them. And honestly, I don't think I ever got used to them. I am still on the brow pencil and powder train. I'm really focusing this where I have sparseness in my brow, which is mostly my arch and then toward the front on the bottom. And I'm keeping a light hand. I don't wanna go too heavy with this, especially because it's ink. I don't want it to like leak all over my face. So far, this is actually creating a really nice shadow and filling in my sparse areas lightly and naturally. This little comb thing is really, creating these even strokes and it's looking really natural. Okay, wait, did I just become a brow pen convert? <laughs> the main issue that I have with products like this is that you can't blend ink very well into <laughs> hair and especially onto skin, which is where I apply my brow product. Like there are some areas where I am just applying to skin to make it look like I have more brow in that spot. <laughs> I kind of find myself having to press it on the back of my hand in order to get the tip wet again after I've been working on a brow for a little bit. I don't wanna to top this with brow gel because I do wanna see how long it lasts on its own. I'm just gonna go ahead and brush my brow hairs up a little bit. I will be honest with you, I don't hate this. It's definitely my favorite results from a liquid brow pen that I've gotten ever. And on a first try, I think that says a lot because again, I am not really comfortable with this type of product and I still think I got a pretty decent brow look that I like. So if this is truly long lasting, I could see myself investing more time in getting the hang of it and using it as part of my regular routine. I'm gonna quickly prime my eyes just with the Milani eyeshadow primer. The next new product from AOA that I have to try is their new Sunday afternoon eyeshadow palette. This is in the shade Midday Stroll. Now they released these and then all of them like sold out immediately. <laughs> I actually bought more than just this shade. All the other ones in my order got canceled because I guess they oversold them. And this is the one that I was the most nervous to try because blues and greens can be so hard to get right. Even high-end brands don't get them right all the time. But this is $1. It is a non-toxic, vegan, and cruelty-free formula. I will also be using an AOA brush set. This is a 10-piece brush set for $10.55. Again, it's part of their Paw Paw collection. It's called their All About Eyes set. It does come with this little carrying case that has a top to it for travel. I figured it was about time that I refreshed some of the brushes in my collection because a lot of the times I'll get questions from you all about what brush I'm using and it's discontinued because I've had my brushes for so long. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this E129 brush, just looks like a large eyeshadow brush. These are vegan brushes as well. I'm gonna go into this cream shade to give a nice base for the rest of our eyeshadow and right off the bat, I'm getting a good amount of pigmentation. Next, I'm taking this E130 brush, which is a smaller blender, and I'm going to go into this aqua shade, which I'm, I'm pretty nervous about this one. <laughs> I feel like with colors like this, it's so easy for them to 
kind of turn gray on the lid. So let's cross our fingers, that's not gonna happen. I'm placing this right above my crease. Okay, I'm really gonna pack this on because it does seem like it's on the sheerer side. And this is just kind of a preliminary layer before I go into that dark blue. So we have something to blend it into. I'm trusting the process, I'm trusting the process. <laughs> this one's looking a little dusty, just a little bit. I'm gonna switch to this E128 brush, which is a tapered blending brush for a little bit more precise application with this dark matte blue. It's buildable, I'm packing it on. It's taking a little building, but we're working with it. I feel like I might have to go back and forth between this shade and the aqua a few times in order to get that gradient that I wanted. Eyeshadows are definitely the product category that has been the most hit or miss for me personally and my experience with AOA. I wouldn't say this is a miss quite yet. I really want to hold my tongue until we've got a final product here. I'm gonna take that same small brush that I used, dip it back into the matte aqua and tap at the edges for some blending action. As I do this, I'm also going to blend a little bit down onto my lower lash line with this dark blue and also blend that out with the aqua. Okay, so it has taken a little bit of time a little bit of back and forth blending and building up the color, but I am at a point where I'm pretty happy with the color payoff that I'm getting. So again, this is not a flop yet. Also the padding motion is definitely the way to go to retain as much color payoff as possible versus sweeping and even circular motions. Now, before I go into the glittery shade in this palette, I want to introduce a new product to the mix. This is the new AOA Studio Waterproof Eye Makeup Seal. This definitely caught my eye because I think there is either a MAC or a Makeup Forever product that is very similar to this, but obviously way more expensive. This is $1.55. This is a liquid converter that transforms powder formulas and pencils into smudge proof all day lasting makeup. It says mix it in with powder makeup to seal it in and make it waterproof. It can be used with eyeshadows, glitters, for liners, and more. So this is a super versatile product. It says that you can mix it in with a powder to kind of create a waterproof liquid liner formula. What I'm gonna do is put this on my brush and then dip in to this money green glitter shade. And what I'm hoping that does is give it a little bit more of a cream-like consistency while also minimizing fallout. So just taking a flat eyeshadow brush and, ooh, that was a weird uh, consistency. I'm just gonna take my fingernail and scoop some into the lid there. You can see on the clear part and you can see from the other side, it's sort of mixing into this gelatinous formula. I think it needs a little more, little more eyeshadow. Ooh, I feel like a chemist. <laughs> okay, let's see if this works. I'm gonna place this on the lid area. Ooh, ooh, okay. So I'm pretty much creating a liquid eyeshadow with this. I'm gonna go ahead and keep patting, try to make it as opaque as possible. Ooh. Okay, this is kinda cool. <laughs> yeah, it gives the shimmer shade sort of a foily metallic finish. Now, just cause it's waterproof does not necessarily mean that it makes eyeshadow crease proof. So definitely wanna keep that in mind. And just taking a little bit of the blue outer corner shade, bringing it in a little further to overlap and blend. And so far, zero fallout from this look even the dry eyeshadows. Now, just to show you what this shade looks like on its own without the mixer, it is a little bit on the sheerer side, kind of like a topper shade, not something that you would get this sort of opaque coverage with on its own. So this mixer really pushes the potential. Now I'm keeping my eye on this area here, which is where my eye naturally creases to see how the eyeshadow might move around. This time I'm gonna drop this right onto the lid here where I'm mixing it instead of putting it on the brush. That way the brush doesn't like soak up more of the transformer versus picking up 
the powder. Yeah, this is so cool. So as I'm working on this eye, I can see this eye drying down and it's looking very even. It'll be interesting to play around with this with different eyeshadow finishes. I'm sure it'll work better with some than others. I think I got lucky that this does seem to mix well. I think for most people, it will be a little bit of a learning curve working with mix-ins if you haven't already and figuring out the right ratio of powder to transformer to use. But so far, I think that my risk is paying off. <laughs> for my liner, I'm going to be using one of their new gel eyeliners, but with the E117 brush. This is a really, really skinny liner brush that's included in their 24 piece brush set, which is only $24, but it's actually on sale right now for 20 bucks. So I'll be using that brush with the AOA gel liner in Seize the Day, like the ocean sea, <laughs> which is just a black shade. Now these do not claim to be waterproof, but the description does say they're supposed to stay put all day. I am gonna tight line up at the top. Hello? Okay, maybe it just needed to be warmed up a little bit. I was not seeing it on my waterline. Okay, so this might not be a waterline type of gel liner. I, I can kind of layer it up, but layering up on your waterline is like, kind of irritating to the eye. At least for me, I have sensitive eyes that are kind of ticklish, so I don't want my eye to start watering. Okay, so now with the whole brush combo, what I wanna do is put this at the edge or the very outer corner and then use the brush to kind of sweep it up into a wing. Ooh, I wish this brush was a little less flexible. So this has enough, um, Enough of a creamy consistency where you're able to manipulate it a little bit before it sets. Yeah, this brush would be a little more useful if it wasn't so bendy. The gel liner is not winning me over a ton. It's not bad. It's not the best I've ever used. Only because it does feel a little bit stiff. I don't know if that's because it's brand new. I just feel like I'm not getting as much of a creamy glide as I was hoping. A few attempts and I've gotten the look that I want though. Let me see if maybe it's easier on the other side now that we've broken the pencil in. The initial swipe, there's not a lot of color there. I feel like it's kind of taking a lot of effort to get it to show up an actual rich black over the eyeshadow. Now I do wanna point out for next time that layering product over this liquid eyeshadow we created once it's dry is probably not a good idea because I can see in the spots where I tried to apply or blend the eyeliner over it, it kind of started to remove it in that area. So I do have a new mascara from AOA, but if it's not dramatic enough to complement what we've got going on on the eyes, then I'll just use a pair of their falsies because in case you didn't know, they do make my absolute favorite false lashes ever. But I wanna test out their new Big Boss Mascara first. This is a volume and length mascara. So this is 155 vegan and cruelty free, and it's supposed to have a big flexible wand. Ooh, yeah, this is a pretty thick and large comb wand. So I'm gonna go ahead and wiggle that in from root to tip. I've had a pretty good experience with AOA mascaras in the past, actually, especially when it comes to getting good length. Ooh, okay. Definitely getting some noticeable length and lift. As far as volume, it's on the lighter side, which I don't really mind because sometimes with volumizing mascaras, the coat's so thick that they end up making your lashes stick together, but that's not happening here thanks to this brush being so separating. Okay, I'm gonna go in for a second coat. I'm actually pretty impressed. I mean, especially with drugstore mascara now being 12 to 15 dollars we're getting close to high-end prices you know what i mean or at least counter prices okay with this second layer i'm definitely seeing more volume i lost a little bit of my separating power though but whoa that's a pretty pretty powerful before and after <laughs> that's intense okay let's see if i can get in on the bottom without poking my eye. That is always the hard part with 
these types of wands. I, when I went back in, I pulled out like way more product than it first came out with. Ooh, and I'm wiping off so much extra. So just gotta be careful about that. Way more than I needed. Oh my gosh, this is already a little messy. It's definitely a thick formula. Well, I definitely spoke too soon about the volume. I just needed more product on my brush, but when I went back in, it was way too much product. So that you gotta be a little bit careful about. I'm actually happy leaving my lashes like this instead of adding falsies on top. My first impression of this mascara is impressed, period. So we'll see how it wears. Next up, AOA just launched their perfect bronzer powders. So I got two shades. I got Frappe. This looks more like a traditional bronzer shade to sort of warm up the face. But then this one, Cold Brew, this has a cooler undertone that I think would be great for actually adding dimension to the face because contours are supposed to be cooler toned. So I'm gonna go in with the AOA F14 brush. This is part of that 24 piece set. Going into cold brew. Hmm, okay. I would say it's more neutral than it is cool, but that's totally fine with me because that probably will look better on me versus something that's actually like gray toned. I can dig it. I can dig it. Okay, let me blend this out a little bit. There was actually quite a bit of uh, color payoff there. It's blending smoothly though. Wow. So I just found a new favorite contour and it's $1. How do we feel about that? I feel good. <laughs> I'm gonna put a little bit on my nose and just brush whatever's left on the brush underneath my jawline. All right, I will go into Latte and definitely a lighter shade, but again, no shimmer. It specifically says that none of these shades in this line have shimmer. I'm gonna put that at the top in my hairline, add a little bit of warmth. So far, if you're gonna get anything out of this haul, don't sleep on these. I didn't get any new blushes as part of this haul, so I'm just going to quickly apply the Koki Cosmetics Soft Gradient Blush. This is in the shade Swoon, and you can get 25% off if you buy this straight from their website with the code slashed beauty. This one is just a really light neutral pink. I don't wanna go too heavy on the cheeks since our eye look is so bold <laughs> and blue. I think with blue, specifically eyeshadow, it's really easy to go overboard and it can be hard to incorporate a blue eye look into a full face of makeup. So really wanna keep the eyes the prize of the look and not go too crazy with the rest of my face. But I do have new highlighters from AOA. These are their new Paw Paw Glow Within Illuminating Powders. I have this one, which is sort of a pink highlighter with a blue metallic something or other in the formula. It's called Kawaii. Then I have this one looking like a golden champagne. This one's called Brunch Date. And then this last one is called Wish on a Star and it looks like more of a yellowy kind of pearl shade. I wanna use Brunch Date, which I think is the most wearable out of all three in terms of a day-to-day. -day. I'm going to use their F13 brush which technically I think this is a foundation brush, but I don't know, I feel like it's soft enough to use for highlight as well. <gasps> oh my gosh. Y'all know, y'all know. <laughs> I love a good highlight. I love beaming highlights. And I feel like this is giving me a beaming reflection, but it's got this like softness to it. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. <gasps> Oh, I love it, I love it. So this um, shade is a little bit cooler of a champagne than I thought it would be. I thought it would be a little more on the gold side, but the reflection's definitely looking kind of silvery white, which makes me wonder what the heck that actual white one looks like. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go ahead and bring this on this side. Now I do wanna go ahead and actually use this on my brow bone, cause we didn't really highlight there. I do now wanna take 
the really light one and see if we can add a pop in the inner corner. Here is the E134 brush from the pink set. Ooh, works really well <laughs> with, the sh with the look that we did. I don't know, I think everything's coming together to look really good. The contour and highlight of this haul is definitely stealing the show for me, but we still have a few steps left. Next up is their new retractable lip liner. Okay, here's the shade Dawn. Mm, it's a little more of a bright pink than I was looking for. I want kind of a, a nude. This one's called Satin. Ooh, that's a good warm nude. I will say these are creamy, gliding on real easy. I think I'm gonna go with satin. They have a matte finish, which is typically what you want from a lip liner since you want them to really stay put and stop feathering outside the lip lines. Kind of creates that drier barrier so it doesn't happen. I'm gonna lightly fill in and kind of blend that line into the center. Yeah, that's a pretty color. I could see myself using this as sort of like an everyday your lips but better liner, especially under some gloss, but today we're gonna put it under tinted lip balm. I've probably been reaching for the same five lip products this summer and half of those are tinted lip balms. <laughs> and so when AOA launched their balm shell tinted lip balms, I was like, I need to try those. These are from the A plus line. So again, it's another charity line. So these are 155 each and the A plus products go towards education charity. So this is a hydrating lip balm on the outside with a pigmented lipstick on the inside. It looks sort of like a lipstick core and it is supposed to give us a sparkle lip finish. So I wanna see how pigmented these are. This is the shade Angel. Ooh, okay. This one is Bunny, kind of a Barbie pink. I We'll say that just these swatches, as an example, I'm not seeing like a ton of sparkles, which I'm, I'm happy about. And then we've got Kitten, which looks like a red. And the sparkle on the outside of this is gold. Wow, okay. I think I'm gonna use that first one. That looks like the most neutral out of all of them, Angel. And that works really well on top of the lip liner that we used. I mean, I'm seeing maybe like a few specks of sparkle. It's not a sparkle bomb though. Again, that is something I'm happy about. I don't know if that was their intention, but you don't have to worry about, you know, having glitter lips with this. <laughs> okay, so let's talk. For a full face of makeup under $2, I think that this is gorgeous. <laughs> So I think AOA is showing up with the truly budget-friendly makeup finds, but I wanna see how these perform throughout the day, so I will update you a little bit later. All right, y'all, it has been eight hours since I put this makeup on, let me zoom you in. So I will say that most of the makeup still looks pretty good. I was running some errands today. It is very hot here in Vegas and I had a little bit of sweating going on and I didn't feel like it affected the brows all that much. I'm actually really happy with how the brows look at the end of the day. I wasn't like dripping sweat, but even just wearing it for this long, I'm not really seeing any patchiness or fading. And I really like that this gave me more of a tint look. Like it looks like my brows are tinted, right? As far as the eyeshadow goes, I think that the colors themselves still look very vibrant. I was worried about the liquid eyeshadow we created, especially in this inner crease area. Now I am seeing that it's a little patchy there. I think the skin on skin that happens when I open my eyes and that crease folds, it did move some product around a little bit. It definitely looks better on this eye. There's less wear than over here. I kept seeing shimmer fallout happening under my eye. Also, there was like some random shimmer transfer like up here. So the shimmer in the shadow was on the move. It's not look ruining, especially because the shimmer is on the finer side, but definitely something that I would rather not happen. <laughs> I am very impressed with this mascara. My lashes are still lifted and lengthened and they look volumized. I was actually afraid that with this much volume that I got, especially when I dipped back into the tube, that my lashes would weigh down throughout the day and I don't, I don't really think that happened at all. Also, I had like an allergy sneezing fit earlier, so my eyes started tearing up. I did have actual tears like coming down and 
no smearing at all. No running, no smearing, and my lashes aren't clumped together. The eyeliner, on the other hand, I gotta get, get in here so you can really see. I'm not a huge fan of. I think it sort of looks faded at this point in the day. It's definitely mostly gone from my waterline. But uh, yeah, I just think that there are better gel liners, even if they are more than a dollar. Even my favorite Essence pencil eyeliner is $2.99 and infinitely better than this, so I'll spend the extra two. The contour still looks great. It still looks smooth, not patchy at all. Very obvious on the skin still. The highlight is still popping. As for the lips, you can still see a little bit of color. I did have to reapply after eating. Obviously it's a tinted lip balm. It's not meant to be like a long lasting budge proof lipstick, but there was some color left behind because of the lip liner. So I just popped a little back on and it's still looking good. It's feeling good. So I think that that's going to be a product I reach for a lot when I want to add a little color to my lips, but I'm really looking to hydrate them. Overall, I am really happy with how this look turned out and I'm happy with how it looks eight hours later. So what did you think of this Shop Miss A makeup haul? Do you think that these products performed well considering they cost less than $2? Tell me in the comments below. Today's shout out goes to Nathalie. Thanks for being a member of the Slashed Squad and join me over in this video next where I share my drugstore full glam makeup routine that feels lightweight for summer. I'll see you over there. Bye.